and welcome to the Andrews McMeal Kids presentation of Summer and Fall 2023 titles. I'm Diane Mangan, and I'm the Marketing Director for Children's Books here at Andrews McMeal. The presentation today is in three parts, leading off with new graphic novels and new middle grade fiction, then next in the series for both middle grade and graphic novels. First up is Bean the Stretchy Dragon. This is a graphic novel for readers as young as age seven and is based on the popular webcomic Sally and Bean and features all new content from the webcomic. Debut graphic novel for the creator. This delightful book takes readers through a day in the life of Bean the Stretchy Dragon. We learn that Bean grooms and stretches every morning, loves beans, and facts. In fact, it's his favorite meal and how he got his name. We also go with Bean to the forest, a dark and fascinating place full of interesting creatures. Like the jackalope, who are sadly hunted for their magical antlers, the multiplier dragon, because anything they eat poops out three times, fairies, hobgoblins, and even the abaguchi, who can eat things four times its size. We also meet Sally, a witch who found Bean when she cracked an egg for an omelet and has loved him every day since, and is always there when Bean needs her. Some of the great things this offers younger readers, the pages vary in panel size and situation to keep readers engaged both in the story and in the visuals. There are shorter text bursts to reward the reader quickly and longer text blocks to challenge and develop reading skills. The art is gorgeous, the dark palette really enhances the story, and also gives the reader a chance, the feel of reading a grown-up graphic novel, but the text is fun and allows the reader to learn new words as well. The next two titles are graphic novels for younger readers, readers as young as age six, so that these emerging readers can read this format more independently. They're for kids who love graphic novels, but perhaps aren't ready for a longer story yet, or even younger advanced readers who are ready to tackle a story, but still need the visuals to stay engaged and help develop reading comprehension. These titles are vetted and reviewed by a reading expert to level and make sure they are age appropriate. And Fry Guys has a dyslexia friendly font. In Fry Guys, the series introduces kids to Spud, Spudtown, Idaho, a town with all the French fries you could imagine. Curly fries, shoestring fries, waffle fries, you name it. Some of them even speak French. In this first series, in the first book in the series, The Fry Guys, Waffle Fry, Curly Fry, and Sweet Potato defend Spudtown against an invasion of evil UF onion rings. But through some inventive problem solving and armed with ketchup and mustard packets, the Fry Guys take down the UF onion rings one robot invader at a time. Waffle gets the adventure of a lifetime going undercover to save them all. It is bright, it is original, so fun, and includes lessons on working together, being brave, giving people second chances, and appreciating what we have. Peaches are, another, are a group of animal pals, Peaches, Mango, and Pogi, who live in the pastel village of Pocketon. As with Fry Guys, this is also for ages six to nine based on the online comic of the same name by Dora Wang, who is the illustrator and author. In this first in series, Peaches is on a mission to become friends with new cat in town, Taro. The thing is, Taro seems completely uninterested and they have nothing in common, seriously, nothing. So even though it's a challenge, Peaches does not give up. The style is kawaii, giving the art a sweet and soothing feel appealing, comforting, not at all overwhelming, making this very approachable for emerging and reluctant readers. This is a sweet and funny story about friendship. Peaches invited, invites Tara over for movie night, choosing a scary movie because that's what Tara likes, even though Peaches is much more comfortable in the cute, cute and fluffy movie space. One of the interesting things about this series is that the characters live on their own. They have book club, grocery shop, and ride the bus, but they all still have a lot to learn, especially about friendship which in this first book, which shows the importance of being honest, 
appreciating differences, including communication and the value of being yourself. Memes and feats. The first in a trilogy, based on a popular Instagram account, Memes and Feats, Memes is a smart, sassy, and tech-savvy ferret. Feats is his goofy, happy-go-lucky brother. Unsatisfied and bored with their quiet life on planet Ferrotopia, Ferrotonia, excuse me, they build a travel opa, opal to go on a new adventure. But there is a reason using travel opals is forbidden on planet Ferrotonia because they get stuck on planet Earth with no way to get home. Memes and Feats end up in an animal shelter where they meet a shy girl named Liza. Liza takes them home, which introduces some really fun humor as the alien ferrets learn about life on Earth. A communication opal they have allows them to transcend language barriers and communicate with Liza. They put their trust in her and embark on a race against time adventure so they are not doomed to stay on Earth forever. The visuals and text are both so good and work together expertly to make this a super fun, engaging, and favorite story kids will return to. Book one ends on a cliffhanger, so readers will want to know what happens next when Liza goes back with memes and feats to planet Ferrotonia in book two. Last of the new graphic novels is Skip. This beautiful illustrated book follows two best friends, J and B, who find their footing, both figuratively and literally through double dutch jump roping. J often feels like they are a nobody. They are quiet and artistic, much preferring to stay in their room writing and listening to music than around others who don't get them at all, which isn't hard because J doesn't get themselves all the time either. When they literally run into B, fierce, charming, athletic, confident, and obsessed with the street art, skipping art, double dutch, sparks fly and they become fast friends. Jay falls in love with double dutch and joins Skip, a double dutch team, and finally feels like they have a place to belong. Jay uses their writing talents to come up with unique rhymes, and B uses her mad skipping skills and though the two are a formidable team on the court, the friendship is not quite as easy to navigate. This is a charming slice of life story that features a main character of color and main non-binary character, rendered in gorgeous art with playful and funny humor laced throughout, but always sincere and authentic. Creator Sir Sarah Burgess is non-binary themselves, and this is a debut for Sarah. Themes include intense relationships, including platonic friendship and how to grow in that relationship, first love, finding yourself, breaking the status quo, sticking to what it, achieves, what it takes to achieve a goal, and how best to compete. Now for our fabulous new middle grade fiction. First up is Grimwood by Nadia Shireen. We have book one on May 30th, and then book two in late September. This series is perfect for young middle grade readers who love animals and are looking for big laughs. Originally published in the UK in 2021, Grimwood follows the adventures of fox cub siblings Ted and Nancy on the run from Princess Buttons, the scariest street cat in the big city. They flee for Grimwood, expecting to find refuge in the peaceful countryside. Instead, they are met with thieving eagles, dramatic ducks, riotous rabbits, and a whole host of unusual characters. But when Princess Buttons tracks them down, Nancy and Ted and the animals of Grimwood must unite in a mind-bending race against time. In book two, Let the Fur Fly, Ted and Nancy are back in Grimwood. They love their new life there, but the dastardly mayor of the neighboring town Twinklenuts is on a mission to take over Grimwood and kick everyone out. So Ted and Nancy must partner with their new friends to save the home they've grown to love. We love this series for its adorable zany humor, expressive illustrations, and fast-paced adventurous plots. Boy with Wings. This was also published originally in the UK. It is written by legendary British comedian and actor Lenny Henry. And in this story, an ordinary kid is about to become an extraordinary hero. The story starts at Tunde's 12th birthday party. 
and on his birthday, Tunde sprouts wings and learns he must literally save the world. No big deal, right? So what if he can't even stand up to the school bully? Luckily, his ragtag group of pals have got his back, and with his new powers, Tunde is ready to fly in the face of danger. It is a beautifully told, truly funny, and heartfelt story, exciting and layered enough for eager readers, and with font changes, spot illustrations, and enough action to keep reluctant readers engaged too. It definitely deals with the Black experience, being adopted, and accepting differences, and not just in other people, but with ourselves as well. There's a great emphasis on soft skills like diplomacy, calmness, and courage. It also includes a bonus seven page comic in the back by Mark Buckingham. And as you can see from the slide, the early reviews we're getting are terrific. In Noob's Diary of an 8-Bit Warrior, this is a new series of heavily illustrated fiction for kids ages seven to nine. It takes place in the world of Minecraft and features favorite characters of the wildly popular Diary of an 8-Bit Warrior series. It combines the familiar narrative and characters of the Diary of an 8-Bit Warrior illustrated novel series with the artwork style from the 8-Bit Warrior graphic novel series. Favorite characters are back, including Runt, a villager who longs to be a warrior, and Blurp, a zombie who longs to be a human. We love it as an introduction to the rest of the 8-Bit Warrior series titles, since it has all new stories and a great mix of comic visuals, fonts, and text encouraging and engaging young readers. And book two is slated for January of 2024. Nell and the Nether Beast by Otta Rule, this is a standalone middle grade title. 12-year-old Nell Stoker loves animals. She's been coming She's been working toward becoming a junior volunteer at her local animal shelter for what feels like forever. But now it's summertime and her parents are making her go to her Aunt Jerry's old bed and breakfast with her sis older sister, Lulu. It's sure to be boring. But things quickly get exciting when Nell crosses paths with the Nether Beast. The Nether Beast is a, dis is a creature that is decidedly not a cat, even if he looks very much like one. He is creepy, stinky, and kind of slinky. Oh, and he could very well be an ancient being with an integral role in the building of the pyramids. But for now, the nether beast is content to li living as a cat. After all her time volunteering at the shelter, Nell isn't fooled. She can tell the difference between stray cats, escaped cats, abandoned cats, and feral cats. In fact, it didn't seem like any cat Nell had ever seen. His hijinks leave Nell wondering if she's made a new best friend or if the nether beast will destroy everything, not even by accident. Oh, and if that is not enough, Nell learns that the beloved B&B is in danger of closing and there's also the mystery of what might be in the basement. But in the midst of all this, there are some really good themes like responsibility for volunteering and animal care, working in the family business and understanding the importance of helping others Last, but definitely not least on our new middle grade list is Ellie's Deli, Wishing on Matzo Ball Soup. This is the first in a new series by Lisa Greenwald. Lisa is known, of course, for her TBH and Friendship List series, and we're excited to be publishing her. Lisa is also a librarian in the New York City Library System. This new series is all about celebrating diversity in food. The first story follows sixth grader Ellie Glantz as she works to save Tra family's traditional Jewish deli, now run by her grandparents, that's been on Restaurant Row for over 100 years. It's a delightful story about sticking up for what you believe in, business ownership, tenacity, friendship, and family. There's an amazing cast of characters. Ellie and her multi-generational -gener Jewish family, including her parents and grandparents. There's also her BFF, Ava, who must na navigate her feelings when her mom starts dating a woman, and Ellie's other BFF, Anya, whose family owns Taste of India on Restaurant Row. Vetted by authenticity and sensitivity readers for Jewish and LGBTQ plus points, this contains 40 charming black and white illustrations and 14 recipes, keeping readers engaged, but also giving them a chance to take the story literally off the page and into their own kitchens and homes. 
And book two is slated for fall of 2024. Now we'll move on to the next in the series for chapter books in middle grade. From our Epic Originals line, this is the second book in the Creepy Cafetorium series. This chapter series is for newer readers who, will still, who still need shorter stories and who enjoy highly illustrated books. These charming stories present kids everyday school and friendship challenges in unexpected ways, letting them laugh while they build empathy, resilience, social skills, and more. The Layla Nugget Mystery series, this is book three, and this is from Dustin Brady, the author of the popular Trapped in a Video Game series. The, as I said, this is the third and and book, and it is the final book in the series. The first book was published last October, and the second one came out in March of this year. Perfect for fans of Investigators and King and Kayla, this chapter book series will appeal to those who love spunky heroes, cute dogs, and exciting mysteries. And in this one, Kate and their dogs are on a missing mission to re rescue the missing Red Dogs team mascot. Archibald Finch and the Curse of the Phoenix. This is the second title in the Archibald Finch series. The first one was published in 2021. It's a new adventure for Archibald and his friends, and they embark on yet another daring journey that tests each of them in different ways. Now we have next in the series for graphic novels. First up is The Witch's Throne 2. This continues the action-packed graphic novel epic that blends fantasy adventure, shonen manga, and the grand imagination of Dungeons and Dragons. And it's based on the hit Tapas webcomic. In volume two, Agni and her throne seeker friends finally made it, make it to the Citadel and prepare to start battling their way through the tournament. Greater Cedric, Cedric Cabalas is a Filipino-American artist inspired by RPGs and shonen manga. The Witch's Throne series recasts classic shonen manga tropes in a fun and appreciative way. It's sure to appeal to the many crossover fans of anime, fantasy, and classic role-playing games. Sorceling, book two, is out in August and concludes the series that started last year. At the end of book one, we learn that Sorceline is a cryptid herself. And now in book two, we learn more about her past, including her mother and brother. Despite having special powers, Sorceline is highly relatable and her struggles mirror those of most 12 year olds, difficulty controlling emotions, social pressures, family drama, and navigating her identity. The art is at atmospheric and immersive. It's magical yet believable. In book two, Sorceline is still more comfortable relating to mythical creatures than her human classmates, but they must all work together to help Sorceline uncover her origin story. Wouldn't be a presentation from Anders McMeal without Big Nate. This is the next volume in the classic comic selection. Nate's popularity never wanes, as evidenced by two of the big Nate titles being selected in the Children's Book Council Kids' Favorite Picks. Plus, the Emmy-nominated Big Nate animated series returns to Paramount Plus this summer with season two. It's been greenlit. We're also doing new Get Caught Reading posters in partnership with the Children's Book Council. And the one of them is uh, from Lincoln Pierce, and I'll have a sneak preview of that at the end. In Breaking Cat News, this is the sixth volume in the popular comics collection. And it's a nice series because readers can start at any time. Unsupervised Crabgrass. This is a growing series that we're very excited about. Uh, the first one came out last September. And it's been very well received. And it is a um, on the best of the 2022 best graphic novels for children reading. In the second series, uh, best friends Miles and, Kevin, Miles and Kevin are back with adventures in school hallways and neighboring backyard, neighborhood backyards. As it is said in the not so distant time before the internet, this is one parents honestly enjoy too. It's also a new get caught reading poster for this summer. Another favorite, Phoebe and her unicorn, Unicorn for a Day. 
this next volume. And here, Phoebe gets to find out what it would be like to trade places with Marigold for a day. Turns out it's much harder than it looks. Unfamiliar 2, it's another title from our partnership with Tapas Web Comics. Unfamiliar Volume 2 continues the exciting witchy adventures of Planchette and her new friends, Pinion, Sun, and Babs. The second book does complete the series. Here, the friends are going to try to help a ghost bride rest in peace, work together to handle a blackmailing fairy king, a possible new romance, and an overnight camping trip in a profoundly evil forest. It has the same offbeat charm set in an intriguing yet often funny world, magical world, vibrant and cute cast of teen witches and familiar sidekicks. Cat Ninja, Volume 5. This series is not slowing down and remains the most popular series on the epic reading platform in classrooms. When a notorious band of ninjas discovers a certain Metro City hero wearing their colors and practicing their cat food, their leader sets out to settle an old score. Animal Rescue Friends is another very popular epic series that younger graphic novel readers love. In volume three, Join Belle, Maddie, Noah, and the rest of the animal rescue friends as they learn to love an affectionate rat named Whiskers, find Sergio, the tortoise, a forever home that's just his speed, fall for the antics of a chatty parrot with a familiar name, and along the way they make a few new friends and learn that everyone, even insects, can sometimes use a helping hand. It's just a very quick look at the artwork for the Get Caught Reading posters, which will be available to order from the CBC very soon. Thank you.